Good morning. Good morning. The Lord be with you. Um, the First Presbyterian Church wishes to welcome all of you to worship this morning, whether online or in person. If you happen to be a visitor with us this morning, we hope that you would find the visitor thing in the back of the, in the back of the pew in front of you and fill that out and put it in the offering plate later in the service. Also, if you'd have a prayer request, please fill those out and put them in the offering plate as well later. And if you're watching online, live streaming online, you can also put a prayer request on the little comment thing. And hopefully we'll, um, that usually is monitored pretty well. And if we see it, we will get it to Steve before the prayer after the sermon. Um, I have a, just a couple of announcements. The first one concerns Steve. In two Sundays, March the 13th, will be the installation service for Reverend Stephen Brand. Um, that will be here, obviously. That is a service of the Presbytery of Scioto Valley. Um, kind of one of the neat things about it, though, is that the local pastor puts the service together for themselves. They're putting their own worship service together. Um, but there will be people from all over our presbytery that, who are here, pastors, as well as elders from other churches, um, taking part in that service. And then after the service, there will be refreshments. And as I understand, it's kind of like an ice cream social afterwards. And again, the pastor gets to pick the food that, that they're going to be having. So it'll be a, it will be a fun afternoon. An important part of calling a new pastor is that final, this is the final piece of that whole year-long process is the installation service. And we're, we'll get that taken care of. That is on March the 13th. And then the second um, that I have is from Sarah Creamer, and that's about the Joan of Arcadia, the Lenten series, that's going to be taking place on three Tuesday evenings, uh, March 22nd, March 29th, and April the 6th. And they're going to be having soup and some, and some other stuff for the kids, too, because there's going to be some things going on for the kids as well. And that's going to be going on down at Persinger Hall, I understand. But she needs some help with soup. And so, like, on the 22nd, potato soups. And you need, like, three crock, crock pots full, etc. You get the idea. I'm going to give this back to Sarah. So if you think you can help with that on one of those dates uh, or all three of those dates, then please see Sarah, and she will have that so she can make plans for that. And I think we have a couple of other announcements. Melody. Good morning. Um, I'm here to uh, speak to you a little bit about the youth music ministry. Um, before the shutdown, we were really rolling with our youth, and in fact, my little chimes choir, which were kindergartners through like third graders-ish, they were just ready to start playing when we shut down uh, the church, and they never got to play after all the hard work they had put in, and I felt horrible. Um, we spoke to parents back in the fall, and they kind of felt like Getting their kids through the school day with masks and so on and so forth was about all they could handle at that time, which we understood completely. Um, recently, there was a survey to determine if parents were ready, and they decided, yes, they, they are ready to kind of kick that back up again. Uh, what we need now, Kristen, Julie, and I um, need to know who is interested in what. Um, this will help us determine if the format that we had before the shutdown would still work or if we were going to have to make it look a little bit different. And so that would be determined by the numbers of children or youth that we have in each age group and whether they want to sing and ring or do one or the other type of thing. So at this point, we just need names and who's you know, game to do this. In, uh, on the front of the bulletin, down at the bottom is the information to get in contact with me. Because I'm retired, I'm going to be the contact person so I can get all the names written down and then report to my two buddies. Um, but anyway, um, uh, just let us know, uh, your children, your grandchildren, we, we think that ringing chimes needs to be at least kindergarten on up. 
because it is pretty technical. Um, and we think that's about the earliest they could really be ready for that. Um, but otherwise, if you've even graduated and want to still participate or whatever, they, you know, just let us know. Thank you. Well, good morning. And what I wanted to do today was something very, very happy and we've waited a long time for. I wanted to let you all know that our daughter, Joni, is here with us today, although I think most of you saw the, her here. And on behalf of Joni and the whole family, we want to thank our church family for all the support you have given, monetary, love, comfort. It's been a rough four months, but you all made it a whole lot easier. And with your prayers and God, Joni made it through this, this ordeal. And we are just so happy and pleased that she's able to come back and, and join us again. So again, thank you all very much. Keep the prayers going. She's got a lot of rehab to go through. But uh, we, we appreciate every prayer. And I think uh, God heard every single prayer. And there's a lot of them going up. So thank you. Now please take a moment to share the love and peace of Christ with your neighbors that are around you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Please share that now, please. So now let's prepare our hearts for worship. If you're able, please stand for our gathering song. God welcomes all. our time of worship in prayer. Righteous Father, King of Heaven, we, your children, are gathered here today. In your presence, O Lord, there is fullness of joy. Fill us with your overwhelming joy. Strengthen us in you that we would remain standing even during the troublesome times of life. Go with us, Lord, and be with us as we worship you. Amen. Um, Please join with me in our responsive call to worship from Matthew 21, verses 18 through 22, which you will find printed in your bulletin um, and on the screen. Early in the morning, as Jesus was on his way back to the city, he was hungry. Seeing a big tree by the road, he went up to it, but found nothing on it except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bear fruit again. Immediately, the tree withered. When the disciples saw this, they were amazed. How could the big tree wither so quickly, they asked. Jesus replied, Truly, I tell you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only can you do what was done to the fig tree, but also you can say to this mountain, Go throw yourself into the sea, and it will be done. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. Let, Let us all worship God. God. Let us join all together for our opening hymn, number 410. <laughs>
And now, let us read together the Apostles' Creed as a declaration of our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his Son, and Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
kids would like to come forward. Be careful. Be careful. Huh? There you go. Nobody saw that. Hello, everybody. Boy, that sounded fun and exciting. Hello, everybody. All right, that's as good. That's all I got too. So that's okay. Welcome, everybody. So today, during uh, church, Noah, thank you. Today, during church, uh, we're talking about prayer. I'm gonna be real simple here. Does anybody know what prayer is? No? Shoot. All right. What do we got? What's prayer? Yeah, I'll let you both do it. Molly and the, go, Molly. I keep calling you Molly. You're Hannah. Go for it. Talking to God. Did you have anything extra? Giving peace to people. Anybody else? Got anything to add to that? No? You don't have anything to do. So what do you have to do to pray? Anybody know? What do you have to do? Go ahead. You have to talk to God. Right? Okay, does that involve uh, cell phones? Walkie-talkies? I love walkie-talkies. No walkie-talkies? Could it, though? Could it, please? No. Okay. Um, so you just need to talk, Right? Is that right? Do you have to sit a certain way? No. Do you have to stand a certain way? Is there like a thing you have to do? Like, you know, you see a picture of somebody praying. They're always kind of sitting like I am, and they're doing this. Do you have to do that? You can do it that way. That's right. But you don't have to. Is there a certain time of day you have to do it? Like, do you have to do it right before you go to bed or before you eat? Do you have to do it? Is there... A certain words you have to use, like do you, do you have to start a certain way? Is there are there magic words? No. Are there things you have to say? You know, like when you write a letter, you put at the top, dear whoever you're talking to, and then you write it all out, and you have to have a return address label, and you have to have a stamp and a zip codes and all that stuff. Is that any of that true? You don't have to use it. So there's no. Do you have to? You have to know exactly what you're going to say before you start. You do, you think? What does everybody else think? Does everybody else think you have to know exactly what you're going to say before you start? Yeah. What if, um, what if um, you stutter and stuff and you don't sound maybe as smart as you normally do? Is that okay? Is that okay? What if you occasionally talk to God and you say something um, maybe rude? Is that okay? No. I mean, we don't want to, but is it okay? No. No? <laughs> Thank you, Noah. I think sometimes it's okay. Is it okay to sometimes, uh, if you ever talk in prayer and you ask God for something, is that okay? Is it okay to ask God for something? Yeah? What if sometimes maybe you ask for something It's a little selfish? Is that okay? No. No? You just do it sometimes? Yeah. I think it's okay as long as you're not doing it on purpose, you know? Because, like, sometimes you really want something. You just ask for it, right? That doesn't mean you're going to get it. But you don't want to try to be greedy or selfish or, or anything like that. Okay, so, so far we found out or we talked about it, and prayer is talking to God. Prayer is... Uh, Maybe asking God for things. Is it anything else than just asking God for things? Um, what else? What else do you do other than just ask God for things? Uh, Talk. Like, can you just say stuff? Is that real? 
Can you just say stuff like your friends? Like when you talk to friends, do you just ask them for stuff? No. But can you? Yeah. yeah. What else do you do when you talk to friends? You talk to Ronnie, that's your teacher. Very good. It, do you just tell them what's happening in your life? Do you try to hang out with them and find out what cool stuff is going on with them, right? Wow. Okay. So when we pray, there's no magic words we have to say. There's no certain time of the day we have to do it in. There's no uh, position we have to be in or place we have to be. We don't have to sound really fancy. We, it's good to think about what we're going to talk to God about, but we don't have to have it all planned out. Sometimes we want to try to be polite, and we want to try to ask for things that are good, but it's okay if sometimes we mess up. And we're supposed to talk to God about more than just things we need, right? Are we supposed to be thankful? I think that's one we missed so far. Are we, are we allowed to be thankful? Is that a good thing to do in prayer? I think mean, you guys know exactly what prayer is. That's terrific. Because, you know, a lot of people get hung up on this stuff and think it has to be a certain way. You have to say certain things. They say you have to look a certain way when you do it. It has to happen at a certain time. That you um, have to speak in a very special way. A lot of people put a lot of rules on prayer. And I'm glad that you guys know that there aren't that many. All we're supposed to do is to treat God like a friend. Treat God like maybe a parent. Treat God like somebody we have a relationship with. Ask him for things we need. Thank him for things he gives us. And talk to him. Have to spend time with him. That's terrific. I'm so glad you guys know that. Great. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. Thank you for this group of kids and for the group of kids they represent. Thank you that they know that, that you're their, their friend and your Lord and their Savior and their Father, that they know that you are someone that they can talk to whenever, that they can ask things for them, that they can thank you, that they can be appreciative of you, and that they can just spend time with you like they would anyone else. I thank you for that, and I pray that they do pray often, often, often. In the name of Jesus, amen. You go with, uh, Mama's teaching one of the teachers today. Okay, the first scripture reading today is from Matthew 6, not Matthew 5. Same verses, 5 through 15, but it's Matthew 6, please. Oh. Is this Matthew? Oh, no, no, never mind. I'm sorry. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father, who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from, e from the evil one. For if you forgive other people when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their sins, your Father will not forgive you your sins. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go right in our second scripture, which is John chapter 6. Have 
and all sorts of microphone trouble today. There we go. Uh, my next, the next scripture is John chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. And it might not be so obvious that it's about prayer, but uh, hear me out. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the signs he had performed by healing the sick. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples, and the Jewish Passover feast festival was near. When Jesus looked up and saw the great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than half a year's wages to buy enough bread for each person to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will that go among the many? Jesus said, have the people sit down there, sit down. There was plenty of grass in that place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. After the people saw the sign Jesus had performed, they began to say, Surely this is a prophet who has come into the world. Jesus, knowing that they intended to make him king by force, withdrew again to the mountain by himself. Amen? Amen. Now, in our uh, bulletins today, we have a list of, and it's not, ha ha, nice. We have a list. That is the, we have solved the problem of the clicker. Good. Well, I'm not going to win. So we have in there a list of things that the New Testament asks us to pray for. And the New Testament asks us to pray for many things. And this is not, I, I want to admit, this is not an exhaust, exhaustive list. It is intended to be, but I am sure I missed something. I am sure that every single scripture of prayer is not in there, but I did try to get as many as possible. So we have this list, and uh, we're looking at this list today because we're, we're doing uh, the last one for a little while at least. We're doing the last uh, sermon on a questions that were asked from the congregation. Now I do have a few more questions left. We're going to, uh, some of them go in newsletter articles and some of them are going to come after Lent, but I wanted to spend Lent doing Lent services and doing Lent scriptures and doing things of that nature. So we're going to, if you did not get your question answered yet, um, bear with me, it'll come. But at this point, this is our last one. And there was a couple of different questions on prayer, and, and they were different in nature, but I feel like the answer is the same. What kinds of things should we pray for, and why don't we always get what we pray for? So those are our questions. Our questions are what kinds of things should we pray for? And then two, why don't we always get what we pray for? Well, that's a tough question, right? Because we saw our scripture, or rather we all read the scripture together at the beginning as part of our call to worship, in which we saw that if we have enough faith that we can yell at a mountain and that mountain will jump into the sea in prayer. And you know what? I, I've, I've never tried that. I don't know if anybody else has tried that. I feel like it would cause a lot of trouble, but it's never happened. And I feel like in the thousands of years that we've had Christianity and we've had the Bible, that there would have been somebody with enough faith and somebody with enough belief who would have done this just to show people that it was possible. And that has not happened. I can even remember sort of a weird trip I was on once with, uh, with some friends in the woods where we were talking about this very scripture and we, were, we happened to be by a very little stream. We happened to be by this very little stream 
And I'm going to say it's a little embarrassing, but we said, well, well, that's a little stream. Surely, if we can ask God for a mountain to drop in this ocean, we could maybe stop this stream for a little bit. We could stop this stream for a little bit. And there were three of us, and there was me and a couple other guys, and we were there in the woods, and I'm not saying that any one of us are the return of Paul or anything like that, or the returns of Moses, but we're three people who believe in Jesus, and we're three people who have faith, and we're three people that I assume one day will be in heaven together. However, we did not stop that stream. We did not slow it down. And in the end, we had to ask ourselves, and what we said was the thing I think most people come across, and that was the thought, well, we didn't really think it would happen, did we? We didn't really think it would happen, did we? It reminds me a lot of a Ouija board, and I know none of us do Ouija boards because those are of the devil and we shouldn't do them. But if you've ever messed with a Ouija board before, you ask a question and you assume nothing's going to happen, right? And if anything happens, you assume one of your silly friends that was there with you is moving the thing. You don't actually believe that this Ouija board is going to do anything. And it sort of feels like the same idea when we pray for big things, when we pray for giant things like the moval of mountains or the giant things like changing the world. I'm sure many of us right now are, are praying that the world changes, that we don't go to war, that people retreat, that uh, maybe that Russia stops what it's doing. I'm sure many of us are praying for that. Many of us are praying for ceasing of violence. Many of us are praying for those things, and yet, do we expect it to happen? Do we expect it to happen? I don't know. And so then, in turn, we end up blaming ourselves, right? We end up blaming ourselves when we pray for things. Maybe we've prayed for a friend's health. Maybe we've prayed for ourselves to be rid of some disease. Maybe we've prayed for one of these giant things to happen, and they have not happened. And in the end of the day, you do the same thing we did by that stream or the same thing that we do when we're around that Ouija board, and we just sort of say, well, we didn't really believe enough. And we blame ourselves. We blame ourselves. And we say it's our fault that this big thing didn't happen. It's our fault. But is it really? Is it really our fault? Is it really our fault when we look at that mountain or we look at that big giant thing and we pray for that and it does not occur? Is it really our fault? Well, I think the answer lies in many ways. The answer lies in a look at what prayer is even supposed to be. What are we even supposed to pray for? What are we even supposed to ask for? What are we even supposed to be looking at and praying for and asking God to do? And so we have our, our big list here. We have our big list, and uh, Ray Jean liked the list so much that she printed several more, and she printed them on our brand new laminating machine and so if you would like one of these pieces of paper that you could throw in your Bible, if that be so be it. it, they are in the back there in the corner. And so what are the things we're to pray for? Well, the ones that are up there, we have pray for people who give you a hard time. And that's several places in Matthew 5 and in Luke 6. And so the Bible here is telling us to pray for others our enemies, to pray for others, to pray for people who are giving us a hard time, to pray for children, it says in Matthew 19. And again, here, what are we praying for? We're praying for others. Pray for the strength to endure difficult times, it says in Luke chapter 21. And here we're praying for ourselves. We're praying for ourselves to be able to endure difficult times. We're praying for ourselves to be able to get through these hard things of life. Oh, I double, I, I spoke ahead. 
Well, I promised. <laughs> so, the next things we're supposed to do, we're supposed to pray that we do not fall into temptation. This is Luke 22. And this, again, is a prayer for ourselves. But what is it? It's a prayer for ourselves that we cannot fall into temptation, that we can keep ourselves readily free of sin, that we can keep ourselves, we can avoid these times of temptation that while the Bible tells us we can overcome, we are praying that we do not fall into them. So we're praying for ourselves and for our courage and strength to be able to see those things in life that do tend to cause us to sin and to have them not sin. When we see those triggers, we don't fall for them. We're praying for Christians, it tells us in 1 Thessalonians and in the book of Hebrews. It tells us to pray for other Christians. And so here again, we're praying for others. And if you haven't seen this so far, we've prayed for others. We've prayed for ourselves. We've prayed for others. And now we'll get into a new one. Pray that God's kingdom will come and his will be done. Of course, Matthew 6. And so now we're praying for God's will. We're praying for God's will. And I think when you look through the rest of this list, that is the bulk of the categories we're going to find. We're praying for others. We're praying for ourselves, and we're praying for God's will. Pray that God provides for our daily needs, Matthew 6. Pray for God's forgiveness as we forgive others, and pray that we will not, lead, we will not be led in temptation, but deliver us from evil, which is a little bit different in Matthew 6. And so here we have another call for ourselves and in this case we're asking for our basics we're asking for the needs that we have to survive we're not asking for the extras we're not asking for the things that are over and above we're asking God for our needs our daily needs which yes do include health does it not we're asking for forgiveness as we forgive others. And this is kind of a two-parter. We're praying for ourselves to be more forgiving, are we? And we're praying for others that they be forgiven. So we're praying for the basic needs again. We're praying for our basic need for forgiveness. We're praying for our basic needs of being forgiving, for being a people that forgive others. We're praying for others that they can have the same forgiveness, the same forgiveness that we have. That we not led in temptation. So this is a little bit different. In our first scripture that we referenced, we were praying that sort of as we see these temptations that we don't fall for them. This idea that when we find our triggers, when we hit our triggers that often lead us to, lead us to sin, that we don't fall for them. And here we're praying that we avoid them altogether. Here we're, being, we're asking for a prayer that these temptations not even be something we see. So we're reducing our triggers, as it were. And that we're delivered from evil. And now that's a whole higher standard. Uh, uh, seeing that bag of chips and not eating it is a whole level lower than falling for the, the things of evil. And the things of evil, you know, these are the, the biblical acts when we think about, say, Satan, we think about demons, these kinds of evils, but they're also, in my opinion, the evils of things like corporate greed, the evils of things that are more than just something that one person is bringing. These are things with power behind them. This is, these are bad things with power behind them, whether they be powers as demons and devils or power as comes from corporate Powers that come from groups of people coming together. We're praying for boldness, it says. We're praying for boldness and proclaiming the gospel and for God to do miracles in people's lives. And this is Acts 4. And so here we pray for ourselves, but what we're praying for ourselves is our ability to take part in what God is doing. It's our ability to take part in what God is doing. And we're asking for prayer for others. 
again. And here for others, what we want is miracles. So don't hear this sermon as being a sermon that is asking you to lower your expectations because it is not. We are to pray for miracles. We are to pray for miracles, for things that happen out of the ordinary, for things that happen counter to the way always, things always go, for the way that things are counter to even the laws of physics and nature themselves. We are asking for miracles, and what are they? They're miracles for others. We want miracles in other people's lives, that they be healed, that they know God's will, that they can be a part of of God's will. And then it says in Ephesians 6, it says that we're to pray all the time, that we're to be alert, that we're to pray for fellow believers. And this is similar to when we asked before to pray for Christians, but it's encouraging us again. We're to pray for other believers. We're to pray for other believers. And we're to pray for a fearless teaching of the word for fearless teaching of the word so this here is a prayer for ourselves, but it's a prayer for ourselves that we're able to take part in God's will that we're able to more take part in God's will we're praying for courage not just to be courageous not so that just so that we can maybe ask that girl on a date or something we're asking for courage so that when we share god's will or share god's word excuse me we are doing so with boldness we're not hiding any of it we're not trying to say well you know but we're being bold with the gospel of jesus We're praying that we're filled with the knowledge of God's will. And we're praying that we open the doors. Pray for open doors, excuse me. We're praying for open doors of the gospel. This is Colossians 1 and then 4. And so we're praying to be filled with the knowledge of God's will. So again, we're praying for ourselves, but we're praying for ourselves in order that we're more able to take part in God's will. We're praying that we're more able to know God's will. We're praying that God's will be done again. We're asking for the open doors for the gospel. So we're praying for open doors. So this sort of fits together with when we're praying for other Christians. We're praying that other Christians be bold. We're praying that we be bold. We're praying that we know the knowledge of God's will. And we're praying for open places in order to be able to share the gospel ourselves and others. Praying for God's will. We're praying that the word of God may be glorified. So we're praying again for God's will. We're praying that the word of God be glorified. We're praying that people around the world see the word of God and they glory it. We're praying that the people around the world see the word of God, see it for what it is, the word of God, and not just the word of man. We're praying for God's will, for deliverance from evil men is the next one. We're praying for deliverance from evil men in 2 Thessalonians 3. And we're praying for everyone, for government leaders, for peace, for quiet, for godliness and holiness in first timothy so here we're praying for ourselves again we're praying for ourselves for things that are beyond us for deliverance from evil men for things that are beyond our control and our abilities that we be delivered from men that would harm us delivered from men that would stop us from trying to deliver god's word deliver us from evil men and we're praying for everyone. And of course, that's for others, right? We're praying for everyone, for government leaders, for everyone. And we're praying for peace. We're praying for quiet. We're praying for godliness. And we're praying for holiness. So we're praying for others and that others might experience what can only be had in the gospel of Christ. We're praying for a peace of this world. We pray for sinners 
in the next slide. We pray for sinners to find life in Christ, which is, of course, praying for others. And we're praying and we're asking God for wisdom. And this is of ourselves from James chapter 1. And this is of ourselves. We're asking prayer for ourselves. And so if you look at just those slides, and that's not all of them, and that's probably not every listing in the New Testament, but we have 19 different references on which there is something that we are to pray for. We have 19 different references, and seven of those are to pray for others. Seven of those are to pray for others, that they can have good things, that they can have the knowledge of God, that they can be deliverers of good news, that they can be safe. We're praying for children. We're praying for people who give us hard times. We're praying for other Christians. We're praying for people that they may be forgiven. We're praying for people that they may believe the gospel of Jesus. We're praying for others that they may know peace, that the world might have quiet, that the world might know godliness and holiness. And we're praying for others that they might find new life in Christ. But then also there's the same number of references. There's seven references where we're praying for ourselves. We're praying that we can endure difficult times, that we don't fall into temptations, that we have our daily needs met, that we are more forgiving of others, that we can avoid temptation altogether, that we can be delivered from evil, that we can be delivered from evil men and that we can have the wisdom of God. So we're praying for ourselves. So when we pray and we're asking again, what is prayer? And we're asking again, why necessarily don't we always get the things that we ask for? And we're, we're asking what prayer is and what we should pray for. We'll know this, what we should pray for is others. We'll know this, what we should pray for is ourselves. We should pray for others that they might have forgiveness, others that they might have repentance, others that they may join the kingdom of God, others that they may be bold as such as Christians, other Christians that they may be so bold that they share the gospel with others. Pray for ourselves. Don't forget to pray for yourselves. few years ago, well, we're talking 10 or 11 years ago, uh, one of the people that was in charge of our prayer chain was uh, just all about praying for others and wanted to know every prayer request and wanted to put out every prayer request. But I'll tell you what, would never put anything of their own out there. Would never put any of their own out there. That's important. We're not just praying for others, we're praying for ourselves. Some of us might be selfish prayers and we don't pray for other people, but some of us forget about ourselves. We're to pray for self. That we get the needs, the things that we need, that our common needs be met, that we avoid sin, that we go further along in our sanctification, that we're more able to be a part of God's will, more able to be a part of his, God, of his kingdom come, and that we are more able to be a part of this. But then also we're to pray for God's will. And here we only have three references to pray for God's will, but they're big. But we're to pray for God's will. We're praying for God's kingdom come, that his will be done. We're praying for God's will, that doors are opened for the gospel. We're praying for God's will, that the word of God be glorified. And so we are praying, maybe not as often in this case, because there's only three references, but are they so bold? We're praying for God's will. And if we notice the references to praying for others and the references for praying for us often involve God's will. We want to be more a part of God's will being done. We want to be more like God in our sancti in Jesus, in our sanctification. 
We want to be more like God in our ability to forgive others. We want to be more like God. We want other people to join God's kingdom. We want other people to repent. When we pray for people that are giving us a hard time, it's not just so they stop giving us a hard time, but also so that they stop giving anybody a hard time. So that they too repent. So we pray for God's will. And there are three of them, three more references, and I know this all adds up to more than 19, but some of them are more than one thing. There are three more references that we're praying for ourselves, but in order that God's will be done. Specifically so that only God's will be done. We pray for ourselves so that we can be bold in our proclaiming the gospel. We pray for ourselves so that we can be fearless in our teaching of the word. We pray for ourselves so that we can be full of the knowledge of God. So when we pray, what are we to pray for? I think we can look at other scriptures and see that we're to ask for just about anything. We look at our scripture that we read earlier and we see this call to be able to ask and talk to God. Just like we spoke about with the children, we are to talk to God about everything. But the bulk of, the majority of our prayers fits in these categories. That we're praying for God's will. That we're praying for our ability to be a better part of God's will. For our ability to be more like Jesus. And for others' abilities to do the same. To be more like Jesus. To repent of their sin. To be a part of God's kingdom. And to share God's will. To share God's word with more and more and more people. So it seems to me that the main purpose of prayer is to get the world on board with God's will. The main purpose of prayer is to get the world on board with God's will. Not to get God on board with our will. We're not trying to convince God to do what we want. The main goal of our prayers is to get ourselves and to get the people around us more on board with God's will. And so when we look at these things that we ask for and they don't happen, well, it's not the main point of prayer. The main point of prayer is to get us on board with God's will. To get us on board with God's will. So when the Bible tells us that we, if we ask for God to send a stone, we ask for God to send a mountain into the ocean and he will do so, we see something giant. We see something great. And maybe I'll ask this. What would be more giant? What would be more similar to asking a mountain to go into the ocean and having it come true. What would be more similar to that? If I get that job I really wanted, or if there's really peace in this world? What would be a bigger accomplishment? What would be the greater accomplishment? That I be cured of a disease that I have or that my sins are forgiven and I am able to join in God's kingdom forever and forever and for eternity. Amen. What is a bigger deal? What is a greater need of this world? What is a greater need of us? What is a greater need of us as individuals that God forgive us? Or that we get what we want? What is the greatest need all humanity faces? It's forgiveness of sins. What is the biggest change we could ever hope for in this world? Peace. Sanctification. That the world get better, not worse. That the word of God be glorified. That God's will be accomplished. To me, that's more. 
So the word of God or the act of prayer is the main reason. And please don't hear me saying that you can't ask for anything, because you can. But the main point, the main reason for prayer is to get us on board with what God would have us do. To get us on board with God's will. To bring us on board with God's kingdom. To bring others on board with God's kingdom. To bring others on board with God's will. To make this world look more and more and more like God's kingdom. And to bring more and more people into God's kingdom. That is our main purpose of prayer. And I think the second main purpose of prayer is to get of us the ability to do those things. To give us what we need in order to be able to accomplish God's will. And that's where I think John 6 comes in. Because Jesus had not enough. God's will in that place and in that time was to feed 5,000 people. And he did not have enough until, and maybe we skip over this, but in verse 11, Jesus took the loaves, he gave thanks, and he distributed them. I think, without that prayer, it wouldn't have worked. I think, without that prayer, it wouldn't have met the needs. It wouldn't have happened. So prayer is to get us on board with God's will, and prayer is to give us the needs, to give us the abilities, to give us the strength, to give us the resources to be able to accomplish those needs. And there's a whole lot more to prayer than that, but I think that's a good place to end. So let's pray. Lord God, I pray that this church follow your will. I pray that this church have all that it needs in order to do that. I pray that this church be your response to the needs of the people in this community, to the needs of the people in this body of believers, to the needs of the people in this world. I pray that you show us how to be more like you. You show us how to avoid the, the triggers of sin that we have, that you give us the strength to be able to avoid those temptations that we too often fall into. That you give us a wisdom that can only come from your word. That you show us how to be a people that glory in your word. That you show us how to be a people to share the gospel of Jesus, to share your gospel in a way that is powerful, in a way that is not ashamed in any way, shape, or form and that you open doors and windows and places for us to be able to do that. And that when you open these doors and places for us to be able to share your gospel, for us to be able to share your will, that we take those opportunities. And we take those opportunities with boldness and with courage and with a wisdom of the word of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Let's all stand and sing our next hymn, which is number 470. There's a longing in our hearts.
as we prepare to give our tithes and offerings to the Lord. Please join me in the unison prayer of dedication. Eternal God, we present our tithes and offerings to you now as a token of our love for you. We know that our financial giving is not the only thing you require. Help us to remember to take your gospel to the whole world, to love you with all our hearts, our minds, and our souls, and help us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. Amen. Thank you. Our uh, prayer requests, of course, uh, please note all of the prayer requests that are in the bulletin already. Um, all of our mission co-workers and servicemen and women and those who just need prayer and prayers for surgery and health and recovering and those who are dealing with cancer. So please remember to look through those. Uh, our prayer requests that came today are for Leslie Reeves, who is recovering from cancer surgery well and is preparing for treatments. So prayers for her. Uh, prayers for Sue Frump, who you might have seen. She lost her son. Her son David passed away this week. So prayers for them, her. Uh, prayers for Kevin Anderson, who needs healing. 
Prayers for Kaylee's grandma, Pam, that times get better for her. Yes. And uh, Joy Heine uh, would like to thank the church family for remembering her and cards and gifts. So thank you. Lord God, we come before you in prayer knowing that uh, there are so many needs and so many wants and so many desires in this world. But Lord, we pray above all else that the desire of our hearts be for you, that the desire of our hearts be for you and for your kingdom. But Lord, we know as people that we have many needs. And so Lord, we pray for those who are around this world sharing your gospel we pray for all of those who are serving our country, for all of those who just need your prayers, for those who are recovering and are about to undergo surgery, for those with health concerns, for those who are dealing with cancer. We pray for all of them. We pray for the needs and wants of our hearts. And we continue to pray by saying that which you have taught us. Saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now let's all stand and sing our closing hymn, number 761. Right, and now let's all go forth in the love of God, the peace of Christ Jesus, and the united power of the Holy Spirit. Amen?